Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with... Emmy Hall! And today we have something very special from the fatherland. We have <laughs> two very interesting and very different Volkswagens. Tell us about yours. I have the 2015 brand new Golf TDI, baby. I got some perfect nuking going on here. Yes, you do. And it's a manual transmission, right? Yeah! Yes, see, see, here's the problem. I have the brand new Wild 2014 Bug. That's the R-Line, so it's the Beetle R-Line Turbo. But it's an automatic, it's the DSG. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take them around the track and we're gonna do a little bit of a review and we're gonna have a little bit of fun, right? Oh yeah, we're always gonna have fun and I think I'm gonna kick your butt. Maybe. Kick your butt. Yeah, it's coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. <laughs> Volkswagen has given us a two liter inline four turbocharged engine that's good for 150 horsepower, but 236 pound feet of torque. Now, power's going through these front wheels via a six speed manual transmission. Thank you, baby Jesus. And EPA fuel ratings are 31 in the city and 42 out on the highway. But we have driven this car for about 500 miles and we've been averaging nearly 50 miles per gallon. Yay, TDI! It won't rev higher than 2,500 RPM. <laughs> Come on, girl! <laughs> My two liter engine has nothing to do with Emmy's two liter engine. This is a turbocharged four cylinder with direct injection that puts out 210 horsepower and 207 pound feet of torque. And just like Emmy's, it is fed through the front wheels. And unfortunately, it has the DSG, which is a six speed. There is a manual option. Now, the good news is, all around driving and the feel and the characteristics of the car are great and I'm still been you know, getting around 25 miles per gallon average. Well, I mean, okay, I was kind of hoping that it would go a little bit higher. It's going up to like 3,500 RPM, but that's how the engine prevents itself from exploding from idiots doing exactly that. Still, it sounds okay. <laughs> Off the line, there's two things happening. There's turbo lag, it's not horrible. And then there's lag from the transmission. It's kind of like it doesn't want to completely engage. I think what it's doing is it's minimizing wheel slippage by doing that. That's my guess. You know, remember these things out think a human being 10 to one. They're making lots of decisions very quickly. Not all of them are the best decisions, but you know, that's kind of how the whole thing works. The good news, is that this feels like an older GTI. And with 210 horsepower, it better. Suspension's really well sorted. I have it in sport mode. And I played with the paddle shifters, which are these little plastic buttons on the steering wheel. And it doesn't quite, how do I put it? It's not as fluid as I would like. And every time I did a zero to 60 run, it was better for the car to do it itself in sport mode. So, in sport mode, that's what I'm doing this track in. Come on, baby. Good brakes. <laughs> Dude, 121. Lie to me some more. Come on, <laughs> how are you doing? 115.8. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, how'd it do out there? This feels like a big GTI, like slightly heavy yeah, yeah, and yeah. wider. It's really well sorted. The suspension's excellent. You need to try this car. What about the DSG? It is a DSG. But, yeah. but, but, you leave it in sport mode and it's pretty intelligent. If you start messing with the paddles, it gets all weird. So you just let it shift for you? I had to let it shift for you. Okay. I 
I admit it, I stalled. Going from a 200 horsepower turbocharged gas engine to, what is this thing, 150 horsepower? It's, just, it's night and day. And also, easier to stall. Although, decent stick shift. Thank you, Volkswagen. You know what? I know this thing's heavier in the nose than a regular um, Golf because it's a diesel. It doesn't feel it. I mean, it's heavy. The steering's good. It's light. I know what Emmy's talking about. Hey, I've been leaving this thing in second gear. Ooh, brakes are very, very touchy. They're good, but they are touchy. Yeah, roll control's not too bad. I know this thing isn't set up with a uh, performance suspension, but it's doing pretty good. Definitely feeling it roll out on those turns. Let's see if I can really... Ugh. Come on. Uh, I had to shift. setup isn't too bad and it doesn't feel as heavy as some diesels I've driven it's 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 a good car it's just yeah, not a it performance just, car. it's not a performance car it just doesn't it doesn't want to go like no. we want it to go no no and but it's really quiet it doesn't sound like a diesel either mm -mm. it's it's mm -mm. this it's weird but it's it's a good little car but I would definitely take the uh, blue one over this well yeah I mean you <laughs> and I would because we like to go fast and do stupid things in cars but like your everyday regular person I think is gonna find that this has enough performance that it's gonna satisfy them in that way but also with the killer mpgs and the diesel on it I think that's what's gonna be the major selling point on you know this. I, I would agree with you and not only that but I know for a fact that our buddy Andre has a tattoo on his tushy <gasps> that has VW on it when he saw this thing, he was what? going crazy. He was limping around like a three-legged dog. It was crazy. I didn't know Andre yeah. had a tattoo on his buttocks. He had a VW all over. How do you say butt in um, Russian? In Russian. Popa. 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 <laughs> so, Nathan, what do you think? Well, first of all, about the diesel. Guys, remember that diesels are not normally known for being high performance, but at the same time, look at the 24 Hours of Le Mans right. and cars that win there. Diesels can do it, and this car proved that it handles, yep. gets great mileage, and yeah, sure, it wasn't the fastest around the track, but it didn't embarrass itself either. No, it didn't, and we were both within a second of each other, so, you know, that's definitely not a driver thing. It, it, the car was really well sorted. I'd never felt like it pushed at all. No, not at all. No, and the steering felt great. It's a little light for my taste, but I'm kind of like a little janky about my steering and I like it really, really heavy. So I think that people are going to be satisfied with this. It's going to give you enough performance to feel like, you know, your car's got some get up and go, yeah. but at the same time, it's giving you the awesome MPGs of the TDI. Indeed it is. And for the blue car, now look, it's a two liter turbo. They're everywhere all throughout the line of Volkswagens and in some Audi products as well. And it's a great engine. It really, yeah, really is. It was right? really fun out there. But what's the one thing this car's missing? Oh, manual. Manual transmission. The DSG works really good. You leave it in sport mode, it goes yep. fast. But it's a lot more fun having a manual transmission, and this car deserves it. It definitely does. I mean, this is the R line. This is the top of the line performance vehicle. So I would really want to see how much faster we could get this car around the track with a manual where we could really keep it up in that power band. I bet you it would be about a second faster. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. So. Well, th <laughs> thanks for joining us. We're the Fast Lane Car. Hey, it's Emmy Hall. And Nathan Adlin. And we will see you next time. Don't forget to go to TFL Car for news, views, and reviews. And for the real world reviews. Hasta luego. Bye.